Welcome to Digital Asset News, take a top stories in cryptocurrency and digital assets and break them down to bite-sized pieces. Today we're going to talk about how what seems to be bad news actually turns out to be pretty good news. And the first up, Indian banks halting services to crypto industry post RBI clarification, post banning. So we're going to take a look at uh, how India, uh, the actual banks are sidestepping the uh, Reserve Bank of India and kind of doing their own thing and trying to do their own due diligence and hinder uh, crypto adoption. So we'll take a look at that on top of the fact that UK regulator bans Binance from regulated activities in the country. And I want you to make notice of what they say here is regulated activities, not entirety uh, as far as Binance. So we'll go over those two pieces. And lastly, we're going to take a look at uh, what is going on with uh, this new project called Meld. And I'm going to go over this really quickly and we'll do a deep dive over at Dan Clips. And then uh, before we go over uh, the uh, market itself, I just want to make mention of this is one of our new layouts. So we did one yesterday where uh, we had some bigger fonts and some bigger graphics and a uh, countdown timer. People said uh, things were just too big. So we uh, uh, condensed them and put everything off to the left side. Also, we're going to do like a little bit of timer right here for four minutes for each section just to keep things going. And we made it very small so you can know exactly how long uh, each segment is. But this is kind of like a recommendation. And uh, we may go a little bit shorter, may go a little bit longer, just depending. But it's about that that uh, time frame for what we're doing. So first of all, what we'll do is we'll go over uh, the headlines and the market recap, which we just did. Now we'll take a look at uh, what's going on as far as like the market cap. 1.3 trillion. There you go. That's the big thing. And uh, just so you know, there's a little bit of a, of a, of a pump going on. Which is odd because usually on a Sunday, which we're looking at June 27th, about 2 p.m. El Paso, Texas time, uh, Bitcoin's up almost 4%. Pretty good. I thought it was going to 28,000, and I'm glad I was wrong. Uh, Ethereum is up. Uh, Tether, nobody cares. Binance Coin is at, wow, 0, 0.0 stagnant. 3%. Everything's up a little bit. I think the only big one is, uh, yeah, Internet, ICP, Internet Computer Protocol, Program, whatever. And that one was, I mean, that one used to be up by like over like 150 bucks. It's really taken a big hit. So sure. 7% of crypto.com, anything really big, 2%, 1%. And now, so today's a pretty good day for a Sunday. It used to be Sunday dumps. Now it looks like sometimes there's like a Monday or Tuesday, but you never know with the crypto market. And that's why I always preach about dollar cost averaging and just uh, buying and holding and then uh, doing your, your due diligence for different projects to get in at the right time. So that's what's going on in the market. And uh, that is the big thing. So real quick, just want you to, to notice that uh, for this new format, just let us know what you think about that. If you like it over there on the left-hand side as, as we go through, put in the comments below and let's, uh, let's jump in, shall we? So first up, we've got a nice little piece here about India, India banks, and uh, uh, kind of to hinder crypto adoption. So what's happening? Several Indian banks have reportedly halted services to customers dealing in crypto despite the central bank or the Reserve Bank of India, informing that the banning circular is no longer valid. This has been going on for, for years now. Uh, the um, uh, central government and the uh, RBI and the um, uh, Supreme Court of India said, no, we're not going to ban crypto and it is, it is illegal and we're just going to let that go. Now, now the banks are coming in and saying, no, no, no. Uh, we want to still hinder this and do our due diligence. So we'll see how that works out. And this was a quote, IDFC, First Bank, which is one of the banks there in India, uh, over the past week temporarily stopped all services as it is doing enhanced due diligence regarding banking support to crypto exchanges. Now, this is actually going on in America in certain banks. I've seen uh, different things on Twitter and Reddit where uh, different customers said, hey, they won't let me use it. And this is just small banks or even sometimes even big banks just going, you know what, we want to, you know, hinder the, the progression, but they really can't stop it. And uh, we'll take a look at uh, what places like NYDIG partnerships have done to advance things. So the central bank added that banks may continue to carry out customer due diligence processes in compliance with existing regulations. Bitcoin and other cryptos are not banned in India. Both the government and the RBI have confirmed. So just make mention of that is when people ask you about, or they, they talk in a lot, well, I heard China banned Bitcoin and, and mining operations. Yes, they did. But all those miners are all coming over to North America, Europe and, Ka and Kazakhstan. So that's actually good. And then people will say, ah, well, what about India banning 
cryptocurrency. They didn't ban cryptocurrency, just some banks, they want to be, uh, do their due diligence. And they're just kind of, you know, s s shuffling their feet as all the different people in India are actually demanding high demand for crypto. And then to finish up, uh, CEO and co-founder of crypto exchange Unicoin said this, while the RBI, Reserve Bank of India, has clarified its stance that the banks can provide services after their due, due diligence, it is abruptly insane for these banks to take their foot back. These kind of reactions also alarm the investors of cryptocurrencies for the wrong reason. And that's why we have this channel. This channel and Cryptos R Us and Guy over at Coin Bureau and uh, Diddy from the Bitcoin family and Hashoshi and Alex Masculi, all the different channels I love to watch. Uh, this is why we do what we do because there's so much FUD out there. If you just rely on the mainstream media, you'll never get the whole story. And I think that's why uh, YouTube is, is crushing traditional news out there because people really want to hear exactly what's going on and just get different opinions than what is spoon fed to them. Just my opinion. That's uh, all I can tell you. So again, we take a look at this like, oh, that's bad news. Nah, it's not really bad. It's just one little piece of the puzzle. Now, let's take a look at what's happening with banks uh, when they try to actually work it all out and move forward. So we've got here, NYDIG partnership could bring Bitcoin to your credit union. This is an old story, a couple of weeks old. Actually, it's on June 24th, I guess a week old, uh, or three days old, four days old. This is, when we talk about banks who just get it, this is how banks are gonna compete. Small, mid, small to mid banks are gonna be able to compete with the big banks by offering crypto services. So when India tries to do these things and go, you know, no, we don't wanna do it. There's gonna be small banks, like if you don't wanna do it, there's customers out there that will, and we'll just take those customers from you. That's the great thing about free market. So institutional Bitcoin shop NYDIG partnered with Texas FinTech firm Q2 to provide Bitcoin access to Q2's 18 million users. Uh, Q2 is a behind the scenes player providing online banking software to over 450 small and medium sized banks credit unions, including Texas Security Bank, Mercantile Bank, and Scotia. The partnership with NYDIG will allow Q2's institutional partners to provide customers with access to buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin to their bank accounts. And again, if you got the Wells Fargo's of the world, the Chase's, the pick your bank, uh, they're crushing these smaller banks and these mid-sized banks because they really have a stranglehold. Well, now the small banks are like, you know what? We know how to compete with you. We'll just embrace this new opportunity that comes to us and allow people to do buy, sell, and hold Bitcoin through the bank accounts. I think this is a wonderful proposition. And this is all based on client demand, based on Gene Kondo, uh, the vice president of communication. So when you see these type of things going on, you're like, well, you can do those things, but just remember that banks are closing down as well. When's the last time you actually walked into a bank to do anything? Everything's online. Why do we need banks? I honestly uh, don't understand. If it wasn't for all these regulate, all these crazy regulations as far as like businesses, I would just have everything through Voyager, quite honestly. And when they do their debit card, I'd be closing my accounts because uh, I'll be keeping uh, my cash in USDC at 9% or 8% wherever else it is. And then on top of that, just so you remember, uh, all, that, all that FUD about uh, Chinese Bitcoin miners, take a look at this picture. These are the types of miners that are just being shipped out of China and going to places like Maryland, like Texas, when we had a, our little uh, interview with Chad Harris of Winstone, and also uh, in in uh, UK, England, and Europe with Ibrahim Al Kurd, CEO of Newmine. So when we talk about like, oh, this is there's bad news out there and there's FUD, it is just that FUD. Uh, just take a look at the flip side of the coin, and it really is good. So let me know uh, what you think about uh, these two types of stories. And I think uh, there's actually good things on the horizon. So let's talk about some banning or what is going on in the UK. So next up, <laughs> we've got uh, an interesting story about how uh, Binance UK is actually banning Binance. UK regulators of financing is, uh, is um, banning Binance. So the FCA, which the FCA is the Financial Conduct Authority, announced Saturday that Binance Markets Limited and the Binance Group do not hold any form of authorization to conduct regulated activities in the UK, but are offering, but still offer citizens a range of service online. So basically they can still do exchange type things, but not things such as futures and options trading because those are regulated. So the UK is like, stop that, you can't do that. And Binance is like, no, yeah, we can. Like, okay, fine. 
So Binance has been asked to stop undertaking any regulated activity in the UK by June 30th. So they got three days. The FCA has also ordered Binance to display a notice on its website and social media that is not permitted to undertake any regulated activity in the country. And just so you know, not that this is an awful story, it's just that they can't do uh, futures and options. So no big deal. People can still get their crypto. I'm okay with that. The FCA is known to drill crypto firms before offering registration. To date, the watchdog has only approved five crypto companies in all this time. Two Gemini, Archex, Ziglu, Digivault, and Diginex, uh, Mode Global Holdings. That's it. They're kind of like as, as stringent as uh, uh, New York. They don't let anybody get their bit license for some reason. Binance itself reportedly applied to become a crypto uh, registered crypto company with the FCA, but pulled that application last month following intensive agreement from the watchdog. And to finish up, the news comes at a time when Binance is said to be under scrutiny by regulators in the US, Europe, and warnings from Japan over its unregistered operation. So again, options and futures. I mean, if you want to play that game and, and do those things, it's it's not my it's not my thing. I think if we could just get to the point of allowing people to uh, buy and sell cryptocurrency just like what it is, then I think people will be a lot happier. So that question is, why does Binance go through all the hoops and everything else? It's because of money. Because Binance is the largest crypto exchange in the world by trading volumes. It recorded over one and a half trillion worth of trading volumes last month. And of course, if they can do, they do a little bit of leverage trading, I think three to five X maybe. And of course, they can get uh, options and futures in there, just even more money. But uh, in my opinion, if it's not working out, just let it go. And the last thing I'll say is like this. Well, first of all, here's the uh, actual official announcement from the FCA. When we take a look at these things and, and people are like, ah, dang regulation, and how, how can they do that? Look, it's like this. In my personal opinion, I would like to get a little regulation because... China had regulation and just went off the rails. They just had way too much and just forced crypto just to leave. And they really just shut it all down because they can do that. They're a government uh, country. I feel bad for the Chinese people because look, they had a great opportunity. And now because the government, uh, that's it. And now they're going to push through the digital yuan. If they don't like what you're doing, they'll probably just shut down your wallet. That's awful, awful. But here, hopefully in Europe, uh, North, North America, we can see some regulation come through and give us clarity so we can actually do the things that we're supposed to or should be able to do. And then all these different uh, institutions can get in and go, okay, now I know what they want. Now we can push forward. Now we can do these things. So when we see this, this story about, you know, uh, Binance and, and how it's getting, it's, first of all, it's just, it's just a small subset of, of their operation. I, for one, thinks, think a little regulation goes a wrong, long way and we can do with it just to give some clarity so we can see where we can go. And I think, Hopefully, when XRP beats the pants off the SEC, uh, then we can get that, that, that uh, clarity on crypto. So let me know what you think in the comments section. And let's move on to our last piece, which is uh, meld.com. So meld, James introduced this to me, James over at Crypto AM. And uh, we talked to the, the, uh, the CEO, Ken. And really what this is, and this is crazy. It's not crazy. It's just, I think it's genius. But I got to get Ken on here to explain it a little bit better. So first of all, just so you know, it's built on Cardano. So it's all these smart contracts. This is going to happen in August. Um, there is, let me just show you when it goes down here. This is how it works. Take out a loan, kind of like Celsius, right? You use the Meld app, choose how much you do, and you can, uh, it's a crypto as a collateral or 2x the amount you like to borrow. You get cash. And then you use cash, whatever, wherever you need, but you earn yield in your crypto. Your crypto collateral is added to your Meld's liquidity pools to generate yield and work for you for the entire lifespan of the loan. So in other places, when you get a loan, that crypto comes out, that crypto comes out and they loan that out to wherever they, 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 whatever they do with it, uh, whether that be for uh, market makers or arbitrage or whatever else they do. Alex Mashinsky explained it to me. You can watch the video. I'll link at the very end. And, um, but in this situation, it's, you actually, first of all, you get to keep your private keys, which is pretty crazy. Then it actually gains you yield as it just sits there, which is great. And you also get to use the money. So they're gonna do a lot of different things. They could be staking, it could be yield operations, liquidity provider, and that will help to pay off the loan. And the way that Ken was talking about it is like, you take this loan and the loan pays for itself. And I'm like, 
it just it's like what I, it, was, it was hard to understand because i'm not that smart <laughs> so that's why i have a channel here to to explain it later actually on digital asset news we only do the news and dan clips we do for more for the advanced things and different products so that'll be over on dan clips but i just want to make mention of what's going to happen uh, you pay back the loan and then you regardless if you're borrowing lending staking or holding you're always earning yield from the crypto in your meld app so uh that's all i really want to talk about the rest of it i haven't done my due diligence i just wanted to make mention and say that we'll be doing this later and that's it so let me know what you think about that that's uh, pretty interesting how that all works out and that is it for today so uh, my final thoughts are just this um there's a lot of things going on in the market and some are good some aren't so great but uh, when we take a look at these stories just remember that in inevitably things usually work itself out and if you're worried about about the markets i can't tell you what to do i can just tell you what i do which is just a dollar cost average in and uh just kind of buy and hold and i think there's a lot of things coming on the pipe i think the rest of july is going to be kind of a wash it's going to be like a build up but then in august a lot of things are going to happen i mean we see Cardano smart contracts london forky ip 1559 we see a lot of different uh uh things with bitcoin uh especially with uh, the futures and options uh, being expired with that. So I think there's going to be a little bit more fireworks later on. Just this next month is going to be kind of boring and we'll see how it all goes. But uh, I still believe in the market. I still am uh, pretty bullish. So let me just think about that in the comment section. That is it for today. So look, if you made it all this way to the end, thanks. I appreciate it. Uh, give it a thumbs up. Give it a like. Consider subscribing. A lot of things we talk about here are very time sensitive. And that's it for today. So thanks a lot. I appreciate it. And we'll see you on the next one.